steering into your left and you're gonna give it just enough throttle so that the back tires kick out. All right, so we got this Mustang for the day. We borrowed it and we're gonna go have some fun in it and teach you guys how to drift the automatic. You have to go so fast. Oh my gosh. You have to go so fast. So obviously we're out here drifting a borrowed car and we don't want to kill the tires that are on it. It might look suspicious. So we went ahead and got some Nitto tires and drifts wheels to put on there. These are a super affordable wheel that has like a good design um, and also has good offsets and it's pretty lightweight as well. And then we mounted some Nitto tires on it. And the big thing here is to have a tire that's reliable and doesn't fall apart. Um, you can spend less money on a like inferior tire, but you might get to the track and only get a few laps out of them before they fall apart. So these Nittos really take an extreme abuse, a lot of heat, and with a stock car at full weight, we needed a tire that was going to supply good grip and be easy to drive to teach you guys. So we also went to AutoZone and picked up some Duralast brake pads. Um, these are a new GT model they sold me on there. It's got like carbon brake pads and some V-Groove, um, as well as like the big thing is not putting racing pads on a car that you're going to go drifting with because you want a low operating temperature. Um, these have a lower operating temperature. You can put these in your car and leave them in when you drive back and forth to the track kind of thing for daily driving and going to the track. This might not be an insane race pad that's going to take you to win championships, but this is like what you need for going to local drift events and having a good time. Um, I think that it says something about a 1200 degree temperature um, being the hot spot for them. So pretty much you can run these up to be pretty hot without having any brake fade or anything. So our main goal here with putting these on here was the stock brake uh, pads weren't really good enough to use the handbrake with the automatic and whatnot. So putting these on there gave us extra brakes that we needed to uh, throw the car around and have some fun and not get such a crazy gnarly uh, arm workout. Oh no, not a good time. Gotta find the nearest auto zone. Oh no, those are not gonna work. All right, well, that's why I try to do this early. All right, so we're running AutoZone real quick to get some lug nuts because I oversaw the fact that the wheels are not going to fit on the car with the factory lug nuts. So we had to go in the back and kind of find them, and uh, the lady was nice enough to let us go that way, so we ended up scooping them up. That's my brother, Desi. He's got the lug nuts. Hopefully they work. There's some spline drive dealios, so it looks like they will. Hopefully we can get these wheels on this car and go have some fun in it. You good? Okay, cool. All right, so first thing we're gonna teach you how to do with this automatic is to do a burnout. It's super easy. You're gonna turn all the traction control and the advanced track off. On this car, you would obviously hold up on that button and uh, unlock that. We've also gone as far as removing the ABS fuses and the wheel speed sensors in the back to try to get this thing as loose as possible. And what you're going to do is hold the brake down with moderate pressure and give it some gas and it'll start spinning the tires. And you just want to make sure you're only holding the brake enough so that your car is not moving. And then you just get on the gas and you rev the car up to do the burnout. And that's how you do an automatic burnout. All right, so now we're gonna do some donuts. And in this thing, we're gonna leave it in first gear for the donuts and go around these four cones that are right here on my left. So you're gonna drive in with your circle, you're steering into your left, and you're gonna give it just enough throttle so that the back tires kick out. And then counter steer. And in my other series, you'll see with the How to Drift series, you'll steer left to add angle, and you'll steer right to remove angle, okay? And you're just keeping enough throttle so that your revs are spinning the tires all the time. So in this particular car, we're staying above 4,000, and we are making sure the car is staying in boost in this little EcoBoost motor. If I give it more throttle and get more wheel speed, I have to take away some angle, but it will make me go wider. And then if I let off the throttle and steer in, it will allow me to tighten up on these cones really tight. And then more throttle, and it kicks me out. 
And this is nice because it's just like a manual car when you're doing this. It's no different. So if you've seen our other How to Drift series, that's pretty much the same thing. Whew, that was a lot of donuts. I'm getting dizzy. All right, so now the other difference is when you're doing a figure eight in this car, you can't use the clutch at all. There's no clutch to use. <clears throat> so you're gonna use mostly your on throttle by getting on the gas and creating extra horsepower and spinning the tires. It's wet out right now, so that's pretty easy to do. So what we'll do in this case is we'll go ahead and shift to second gear. We'll come into the turn and use a little bit of a Scandinavian flick. You'll steer right and then left, and it kicks the rear out. You'll counter steer, and you'll just keep that throttle really happy, and you'll keep counter steering similar to the other one. So again, I steer left, I remove angle. I steer right, I add angle. When you do the transition, you're gonna have to feed the wheel or you're gonna spin. See how we just actually spun out? So. In an automatic car, most of these cars, especially in the Mustang, they don't have a lot of self-steer and you can't use the clutch. So you have to be quick with your steering and gas. The nice thing about that is you're really just only focusing on your throttle and your steering. You don't have to worry about the clutch. You don't have to worry about shifting gears. You're just using whatever gear you're in and you're locking it in that gear. So in this case, we're using second. Um, so what we're gonna do again, same type of thing. We're gonna go in second gear and we're going to steer right and then left so it upsets the car and transfers the weight. So we're gonna go right and then left. It's gonna kick the back end out. We're gonna counter steer just like in our donut. And we're gonna flick again and be very quick on the steering. So watch my transition here and I'm gonna go really quick with my foot, my hands on the steering wheel. If you try to do a self-steer, it's not quite gonna work. So you have to, again, really quick on the steering wheel so that you always are adding angle back and saving yourself from spinning. So that's basically how to do a figure eight. First turn, handbrake ready to go, steer right, upset, pull the handbrake. We're gonna do the same thing. I'll teach you guys one more time, <clears throat> but we're gonna use the handbrake now. So basically with the handbrake, with the automatic transmission is you don't have to use the clutch, but you gotta work the handbrake quite a bit harder because you're trying to lock the wheels up with the force of the transmission behind it. So what we're gonna do is drive into this turn just like we did before with the weight transfer, but we're gonna pull the handbrake. And it's very important to pull the handbrake at the correct time. And how you feel that is, we're gonna be making a left turn here. So basically, we're gonna steer a little bit to the right to go out to the cones where we want to enter the car. And then we're gonna pull the handbrake as we steer left. But what we're gonna do is, when we're steering left, we're gonna wait until we feel pressure on our bodies on the side. So basically, when you feel that weight transferring the car to the other direction, that's when you wanna pull the handbrake because that's the best chance to rotate the car around. So if you think, when you're driving into the turn straight and then you turn left, the back of the car starts rolling over. As soon as you feel that weight and that pressure on your right side, do a quick handbrake pull to snap the car to about half of your steering angle. When the car's at half its steering angle, you're gonna get on throttle and you're gonna drive through the rest of the turn similar to how we did the donut and then do the transition like I was telling you to feed the wheel. So we're gonna come into this first turn steer right a little bit, left handbrake, and then gas. And we're using our throttle the same way as we were before. We're steering, and we're gonna go back, and we're gonna do back through here again, e-brake, and then gas again. An important thing in the transition important thing in the transition is to feel it. So we're turning right, I feel the pressure here. I flick back the other direction, I feel the pressure here. And you always want to feel the side pressure 
when you're transitioning so you can feel what the car is actually doing. So again, a transition like we were just doing is you're going to your left direction, so you're counter steered to your right, and as the car is rotating, you're feeling the speed of the rotation and you're steering the wheel at the same speed. So in some cars, this will automatically happen. You'll be able to just throw the wheel and it will spin. This particular car, you have to walk it through. But what that does is it keeps you in touch with what's happening all the time. Um, ideally, you'd let go of the wheel, have it transition on your own. But something like this is more difficult, so it's nicer to be able to teach you guys in something like this. Um, so again, we're drifting to the left. We're counter steered to the right. As the car is rotating, you're also steering the wheel the opposite direction. When the car feels like it stops rotating, there's no need to continue turning the wheel. If you're spinning out during that, you'll need to steer faster. If you're ending up straightening out, you'll want to steer slower so that the car can actually pivot. So again, we're going to come into this first turn, handbrake ready to go, steer right, upset, pull the handbrake, and get on the gas. And then transition, we're going to steer left, and then quickly steer at the same rate as the car is. Do this again here, same rotational as the car. We're going around, we're getting to these outer zones. We're getting on power, we're transitioning. Again, the car's rotating around, we're doing it at the same speed. The car's rotation the same speed. Alright, so that about sums up the figure eights. Here's the transition, we're going to peel it out and then pull the handbrake to settle the car. This is also now we're going to do some handbrake transitions. If you're having trouble in the transition, uh, what this can do is kind of work as a reset. And with an automatic car, it'll work well because the car, you can't use a clutch kick in between transitions to make it snap. So we're going to do the same transition, but as soon as the car rotates over while you're counter steering, you're going to pull the handbrake and rotate it with, rotate your steering wheel with the other hand. Okay. So basically, we do the same entrance as before. Come in, pull the handbrake, car sideways, power through. We're counter steering, and when here comes the transition, we're going to feel it out and then pull the handbrake to settle the car. This is also useful in terms slow down so if we come in too fast you can transition e-brake and get back on the throttle and get the car sideways look at that first upshift all right so what we're going to do now is teach you guys upshift drift this particular car only has paddle shifters so it gets pretty interesting so this will really kind of cover every type of car if for some reason you have paddle shifters as well, this will work great. And if you have a lever that you can just pull and shift, that is much, much easier. In drifting, paddle shifting is not necessarily what you want because you actually have to look at the steering wheel and decide which side is up and which side is down. So while we're in drift, I'm going to have to peek down and look at this little horse right here, this Mustang, and decide if I'm going up or I'm going downshift. The reason why we're upshifting in this is because we're going to try to make a long sweeping turn. Um, and it will be interesting to see how we can do with this thing. All right, so we're gonna throw it in and get the car sideways. Look at that horse, upshift, and go all the way around the side. And I spun out. <laughs> all right, so we do the same thing again. We're gonna come into the turn, handbrake in, get the car sideways, look at that horse, get the upshift, drive out wide, and then we're going to use the handbrake again, oh, and it spins out again, <laughs> god damn it, alright, try it one more time here, we're going to handbrake in, get the car sideways, find that upshift button, get on the gas, and get through that turn with a little handbrake extension.
All right, so we'll do this again. Take note of the handbrake extension. It's definitely an interesting one. Um, we're using that to slow the car down because we can't clutch in and foot brake. So we're using the handbrake and a little bit of the foot brake to slow the car down. So let's do this again. Here we go. Throw it in. Get the car sideways. Find that upshift button. There it is. And kick yourself around. So this also gives me a good time to explain how to slow down and drift. Because we're going to pick up speed till about 40 miles per hour here and then have to slow down to 20. And how we're going to do that is by using the handbrake and the foot brake while the car is at angle. Whenever you're going to use the handbrake and the foot brake, you're going to pull them at the same time, but you're just lightly pressing on the foot brake. You're not pushing it super hard. And you're going to have your hand on the wheel because you're going to have to steer left and right because you're going to steer into the drift for more angle and steer away from the drift without angle. If you do this correctly, you will not spin. It takes a little bit of effort to get used to, but <clears throat> it's definitely doable. So we're going to throw it in, get sideways, look at the steering wheel, get our upshift in there, and we have to slow down so we're going to foot brake and hand brake and steer the car to more angle. And we just went from a high speed turn to a low speed turn. Ready? All right, so what we're going to do here now, because we're doing the rental car Olympics, we're going to teach you how to do a reverse 180 and then drive out of it. You're going to start with the car in reverse, and then you're going to get up to about 30 miles an hour, whip the wheel, let the front come around, and smash into the drive. So we're going to look back. We'll use our reverse cam here. Picking up speed, getting it good. Steer a little bit one direction and flip it back the other direction. And then we're able to just drive right out of it. All right, so again, we're in reverse, getting up to about 30 miles an hour. We steer one way a little bit and flick it back the other way and smash it in the drive. Super simple, very, very easy to do. Just end with the steering wheel straight and you're good to go.